Our question today, um, I've actually received a few times from several different uh, viewers. Um, and the question is, do you have any advice for a vegan that is struggling with SIBO? Oh my, SIBO, S-I-B-O, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So this might be a longish answer, but let's get into it. Uh, when I first encountered SIBO, and when most uh, uh, conventional physicians run into this condition, uh, this is where, in their heads, the bacteria largely down in the colon uh, start walking up the, uh, into the small intestine uh, through the ileum and uh, populating the uh, upper intestine where they really don't have much business. And the person winds up with all sorts of gas and bloating and uh, intestinal distress. And uh, this is uh, usually diagnosed by a breath test. Uh, and the purpose of the breath test is that the, uh, 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 they drink a, a solution of sugars that the bacteria in the gut will turn into hydrogen gas. And because it usually takes about six hours for food and sugars uh, to make it through the intestinal tract, uh, 22 feet of small intestine down into the colon, um, if the hydrogen starts appearing in the breath samples uh, at say two hours, well, gee, if that sugar started uh, meeting bacteria that have come high up into the intestinal tract, well, that defines SIBO. Uh, and therefore, if you've got a positive breath test, you've got SIBO. And when many people hear this, they oh, my heavens, I've got SIBO. This thing has seized my guts, and I'm a victim of this terrible condition. Well, we got to say, oh, let's unwind this a bit. Uh, conventional physicians, when we hear about SIBO, uh, the only reason that this should happen is there's a problem in the gut structurally and functionally. In other words, a normally functioning intestine, especially when the person's eating a high fiber diet, you've got these big soft stool masses coming down the small intestine into the colon. They literally push the bacteria back down the colon. It's hard for the bacteria to swim upstream from the colon into the small intestine when the stool masses are coming down you know, once or twice a day, pushing the bacteria further down. Uh, and so uh, SIBO really should never happen in a, in a normal functioning intestine uh, with a diet rich in a healthy plant fiber. That said, uh, there are medical conditions that foil that. Uh, if someone, uh, say, has Crohn's disease where they've got uh, a really violent inflammatory reaction in the wall of the intestine uh, that winds up scarring the wall of the intestine and they're and forming a stricture uh, so the food mass can't get through and then uh, those big uh, stool masses are pushing the bacteria down, uh, well, and that certainly would open the door for SIBO bacteria marching upward, and, and that's an absolute uh, legitimate reason to have SIBO as a, a stricture or some obstruction to the fecal flow, absolutely. Uh, people with diabetes who have neuropathy, where the diabetes affected the nerve, it affects the nerves not only going down to the legs when people get numbness and tingling, but it affects the nerves going to the gut. And, uh, and the, those lovely peristaltic waves that push food down don't happen so well, and you get almost a, an atonic, paralyzed gut from time to time in, in diabetes, a diabetic and, uh, neuropathy of the gut. Well, that's going to open the door for SIBO. Uh, and... So there are official medical conditions that are the true underlying causes for clinical SIBO, and that has to be dealt with by the surgeon and the endocrinologist. And uh, you got to get at the underlying uh, problem. The, the bacterial overgrowth is just a symptom. It is the flag that the body's waving, uh, that there's some underlying structure. And those folks certainly deserve medical attention. But that's not the case in the majority of folks I'm seeing where, who get this diagnosed, you have SIBO because you got a positive breath test and you've got gas in your intestine. Uh, in the majority of uh, the folks who are in that situation, I think what's really happening uh, is that their diet is too low in good plant fiber. They don't have those big soft stool masses coming down once or twice a day. And they're making too much refined food and sugary foods uh, that certainly do foster bacterial growth. And, and uh, 
they may be eating foods uh, that have the intestinal lining a little inflamed. They've got an irritable bowel syndrome. And, uh, and, it's, and irritable bowel syndrome is usually a, a bowel is irritable from what the person's been, the owner of the bowel's been smearing at it. And why might that contribute to the signs of SIBO? Well, it can certainly give you cramps and gas. But very importantly, when you do the breath test and you take the, uh, uh, you, you follow those sugars, and two hours later, there's a, a big spike of hydrogen gas, and, and the, the practitioner says, ooh, you got SIBO. I think what's really happening, there's nothing wrong with that gut, except that it's irritable. And those sugars that are consumed as a test dose, uh, when they go down the intestine, that intestine is so irritable and, and hyperactive that it pushes that sugar down really quickly, and it makes it down to the colon in about two hours instead of the usual six. And what you're watching there is not a bacterial overgrowth coming up into the intestine. You're seeing a very irritable bowel shoving the, that food down very quickly uh, down into the colon. But the person gets this diagnosis, I have SIBO. Um, so let me just say that if you've got a, a basically healthy gut uh, and you, you don't have Crohn's or diabetes or a stricture or anything like that, um, there's, there's no reason you should really have a bacterial overgrowth in your small intestine. And if you do, because your diet has been not the best, well, it's, it's eminently reversible. You, you want to start sending those big stool masses down. So you, uh, you want to uh, start eating uh, a mixture of, of soluble fiber. That's the fiber that absorbs water, oats and rice and quinoa, etc. cetera. Um, and insoluble fiber, the, the shiny fiber that's in celery and lettuce and, and vegetables. And you need both of those, about a 50-50 mix, uh, to create those big soft stool masses that should push the uh, bacteria down into the gut. So healthy up your diet. And a lot of the, the gases that people complain, oh, it's the SIBO bacteria doing it, are, is really coming from your colon, but these are uh, sugars that are being fermented into carbon dioxide, methane by your colon bacteria. Well, then for a few weeks, go with the low gas producing uh, foods, uh, quinoa, the, the low glycemic uh, foods, quinoa, buckwheat, millet for your grains, uh, lots of salad, fruit should be fine. Uh, and so, to, and, but you may want to cut back on the beans and, the, uh, and some of the other legumes. And you really, if you're having trouble with the gas, um, you, if you are going to be doing lentils or beans, soak them overnight. Um, and, and most of the sugar, the gas forming sugars will come off in the water. The next morning, spill off the soaking water and then rinse them a couple more times, get rid of those oligosaccharides, uh, and then make your lentil stew or your bean chili. Uh, so if you really uh, cut down on the gas producing microbes, uh, or gas producing foods that the microbes will turn into, into gas, uh, you're going to find that the whole gas problem settles down. You, know, you get more regular with your, with your bowel movements and the whole SIBO thing uh, recedes. And, and it really wasn't that ominous uh, SIBO mechanism that we docs are concerned. They've got a bowel obstruction or they've got uh, uh, some neuropathy affecting their intestine. That when we see a clinical SIBO, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a, a valid clinical diagnosis, we get really concerned. I think a lot of the subclinical SIBO diagnoses that are thrown out are thrown around are just from uh, folks not eating the right kind of fiber and, uh, uh, and being bothered by the, the gas that the legumes produce. So uh, most folks who've been told they have SIBO don't really have SIBO. Uh, and, but healthy up your diet is generally what, what's being called for by your body. And hopefully uh, this too shall pass and uh, the, uh, uh, the whole problem will, uh, will fade into your, your digestive uh, uh, scrapbook in the, in, the, in the dim past. So hopefully that was a helpful uh, explanation and we'll probably be covering more of this as we get more questions on it in the future. Thank you, Annie, and uh, thanks for the ask for that question. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Each day, Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our daily Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.